right, I want to be talking to you about atmospheric perspective. We're going to be painting our very own landscape, like you see right here, using our homemade watercolors that you guys did in the first part of your assignment using food coloring, or you could be using sugar crystals or something like that if you do not have watercolor to use. But I'm going to be using my homemade watercolors, and you're going to need paper and a Sharpie marker. And then I'm going to be showing you how I'm using a picture, like if we're painting plein air, which means we're painting outside, I'm going to be using that photograph like I would be observing and being outside. If you want to use another photograph, perfectly okay. But you need to gather your supplies so we can get started. The first step that you want to do is very lightly draw out your shapes of your landscape. So I am really identifying my foreground, middle ground, and background, and no, not a lot of detail, because you know if you have a lot of detail in there, when you do your watercolor, once you paint your watercolor, you will not be able to erase on top of where you just drew. So you can see I came back in, I darkened mine up just a little bit so you can see my lines a little bit more for my foreground, my middle ground, and then I have the areas right here in my background. And that's really all the detail you need. We're going to do the rest of that while we're painting. So once you've done all of that, go ahead and get your paints ready. You might need um, an extra piece of paper or a plate or something like that that you can um, mix your colors with. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do that wet on wet technique. So I'm lightly going to put a light layer of um, water down and um, paying special attention that I'm not going to be painting anything wet into my mountains. That way I'm going to have a nice crisp outline where my sky and my land meet. Then I'm going to be using just my blue and of course I'm going to be using that awesome um, wet on wet technique where I just simply dab in. And I'm going to allow some areas to stay white and other areas to have that deep dark blue. That's going to make it look like it's really soft. Again, things in the background we want them to be softer than they crisper as we move up to the front. So wet on wet is perfect for this. It's going to make it look like some clouds are just wisping by in our scene. So I'm just doing some little fine tuning just to make sure that I've got a nice crisp line right there before I move on. Now as I get closer towards the front, what I want to be concentrating on is my color shifts that's going to happen. Remember we want more intense as we move forward. You're going to see more of the greens happen as you go closer up. Blues go into more of the background. I'm going to be adding in, I want some changes happening with the colors that are going to be in my mountain scene. So you might want another um, piece of paper or a um, plate or something like that. You can mix some of your colors because now, right now we just have red, blue, and yellow. So I'm going to be adding a little bit of red to my blue. So I know that's going to make it slightly purple, but what I want is I want that intensity level to be down. So I want the color not to be as bright as the sky. And I am using one brush on this. I really want to switch sometimes when I'm using this, but I'm thinking about you guys and that you're probably working off not as many brushes as you would like to have and you just have one option. Now that doesn't look quite as red or as not as um, desaturated as I want it to be. So I'm adding in a little bit more red and since this is white um, and wet, I can go ahead and just add it directly onto my um, painting if I'd like to. I'm looking closely because we're using our observation skills and I've got to look back at my photograph of what I'm referencing as I'm working on this. So feel free to stop this video, go back to the reference photo if you want to, so you can see exactly what you're looking at. But I am just going to be working on those mountains and trying to locate the shadows. In this area, I want to locate that there are these crisp angles to the shadows, and that's what I'm trying to capture. In this process, too, I might have to wait and let some of this area dry and go back on top of it. Remember the transparency of the watercolor. I want to work light and always come back later darker because I can't get lighter. I can always get darker. Now I'm pretty happy with what I've done here for now. I might come back in and, and darken up a few areas after it's dried. 
But again, I want to start progressing and moving my way to more intense greens into my foreground. So in my middle ground right here, I know that there is that um, shrubbery or tree line that's right there. That area provides a lot of contrast because there is a lot of shadows um, in that because the foreground doesn't have as many. So I'm going to try to transition some of that green into the tree line and also into the hillsides that are moving up towards that mountain. In here, I'm mixing in my green with a little bit of red. Did you see that little bit of red? That's going to desaturate my green slightly. I want to desaturate it because when I move up towards the front, I want that to be my brightest greens possible. So, mixing up that red and blue to make you a good green and then come in and just slightly add in that red. I am trying to work in, as it's wet, a little bit of those shadows into the tree line. What is a little bit harder I'm noticing working with my homemade watercolors is, is that I can't get it as dark as the palettes of regular watercolors. The reason for that is, is because those, those um, watercolor trays are really thick and so they have a lot of paint and I can not use a lot of water have a lot of water in these um, homemade watercolors. All right, so I'm going to let that area dry. It's still wet, so I can work in the shadows in a second. But I can go ahead and start working into the foreground because it's not touching that middle ground area. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. And notice how my green is much more saturated in the foreground at the very front. Again, remember the rules of atmospheric perspective? We want that brighter intensity, more of the details to be there. I can't do the details yet, but I can add a layer on for right now that I can build with because lots of times watercolor is a layering technique and that's what I'm going to have to do to bring in my details. So what I want to do right now is, is I want to think about the grasses that are there. This is still a little bit wet that's okay because it's not my most detailed in the foreground. What I want to do is I want to bring in patches of that grass um, texture. It's going to be soft because it's still wet. It's not that um, dry technique yet. But I'm going to start dabbling in and I'm working my brush up and down to emulate that um, direction of the grass blades coming up and down. So I'm looking at my hillsides. I'm kind of thinking about how I can kind of simulate the shadow areas there. Okay, the final, kind of one of the final steps before I get to the Sharpie marker is, is I want to start to build in that level of detail. Of course, that's going to be in the foreground area. I have the flowers and also in my um, tree lines where I have my shadows. For these shadows, I'm going to have to mix up a lot, like almost all of my colors together to get that deep brown um, color almost black. So again, I'm working in all of my yellow, blue, and red, and looking at where those shadows go in the tree lines. I need that crispness over here and those shadows, so I add that extra level of depth going into the background. Then I'm going to start bringing in some of that color, because I already have it, into the blades of grass into my foreground. Those blades of grass, I kind of use like a flick of my wrist when I'm doing those. So I want to show you that process too. Again, this is a layering process, so I'm going to have to let some of this dry, and then I can come back in and build on top of it. So I'm going to move from my background now to my middle ground, and now into my foreground by my yellow flowers have kind of dried off some. So again, notice in nature nothing's perfect. So none of my lines should be the exact same. The heights of the blades of my grass shouldn't be the exact same. The darkness in certain areas shouldn't be the exact same. Okay. All right. So the last thing I want to do, you can see that this is all dried. Um, and I have the wet on wet for the background for the sky really soft and then I work my way up towards the foreground with the middle ground a little bit of crispness here with that um, row of trees where we have those deep shadows but the colors get much more vibrant 
um, as you come up to the towards the foreground and I have these blobs right here where those flowers were and I have some more of that as much as I could get dry brush technique because remember we're using food coloring so it's very wet so as much as I could get everything was dry and then I came in and I just scrubbed on um, some of those texture for and it, the brush strokes going up and down um, like gra grass blades. What's important about making things look natural is it's not perfect. These grass blades weren't all the same height. Some were taller, some weren't. Some had thicker areas of darker concentrations. Some didn't. So you vary those things. That makes it look more realistic. Now what I want to finish off with is sorry, that's my kids in the background having way too much fun. Um, but what I want to finish off with is the Sharpie marker. Again, I love Sharpie marker with um, any of the work that you do with watercolor because it adds that crispness. And I definitely want to add some more crispness and I want to add some detail to something that looks like it would be these flowers. And again, I don't want to do too much, but I want to come in. I want to add some blades of grass. I want to add some petals where I want some emphasis to be for these flowers. And the way I do it, I just kind of flick like up and down and that, that adds a nice little bit of um, irregularity to my stroke. And again, I don't want to do every one that would be boring, but if I can do some, and because of the way that this dried, You see, I concentrate my eye over here to this area, and the way that this dried, and I mean, I like it, um, is a little bit that free form, but I'm gonna come in just a little bit to define that edge just a little bit right here for those shadows. I don't want to do too much. I might just stop at that because I don't want it again. I don't want to do too much. And as I move further away, I'll have less of these blades. Just skip it around just a little bit. Perfect. That's it. Kind of impressionistic, but I get in all those colors. I'm just using food coloring, and I've done a I've done a decent watercolor. I kind of like the impression that it gives. All right, so. Hope you guys have fun giving it a go.